going to watch our scripture this morning. We're also going to read our scripture from God's Word this morning. We're going to be looking at two portions of scripture. One is, of course, Matthew 7, verses 1 through 5, uh, which is Jesus' Sermon on the Mountain. And we're also going to be looking at Romans chapter 2 this morning. So get your life recovery Bibles ready. But for now, here is Matthew 7, 1 through 5. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of silence in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye? For all the time there is a plank in your own eye, you hypocrites. <laughs> First take the plank out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. to be completely honest with ourselves. 
It wasn't for me. There's a lot of hurt there, isn't there? There's a lot of sin there, isn't there? There's a lot of things that we know are wrong that we like to do. And you might still like to do them. And you might be sitting there right now trying to rationalize those behaviors in your head. We do that. We do that. We don't want to take a deep and honest look at what got us here in the first place. Because it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Looking at ourselves is hard with a plank in our eye. With a plank in our eye. We can't see past the sin. We can't see past it. For whatever reason, whether we are just ashamed, we don't want to share it, we don't want to pull it up, we don't want to let other people see it. So it's either we don't want to see it, we don't want other people to see it, so we hold on to it. And like I've said, if you were, if you liked the person that you were, you wouldn't be here in the first place. You noticed that there needs to be change in your life. There needs to be change in your life because the old you hurt. We hurt ourselves and we hurt others. <clears throat> we want to change. We want to change, but we don't change unless we notice that need. So that's why we're here. That's step one, right? What does step one say? And that our lives have become unmanageable, right? That we're out of control. No one truly wants to become worse or sicker than that, do we? We don't want to get more unmanageable or sicker. We want to get better. So we know that. We want to be a better person. We want to be a better person. We come into a facility, and as I said a hundred times over, I believe God brought you here so that you might receive the information, the direction, and the help that you need. So in order to do so, we have to expose some really bad stuff. We have to deal with some bad behaviors that are part of that unmanageability, that are part of that insanity. We've recognized now in step two that we have to have something greater than ourselves that can restore us to some sense or sort of normalcy, let's say, so that we're not completely out there, right? We have to admit then that we have a plank in our eye. That sin, those character defects, those shortcomings, that's a plank in our eye. <coughs> that is the plank in our eye that keeps us from seeing the truth, from seeing the light, from seeing that which God would have us to see and to know. Well, what happens? We're looking at Matthew 7 here. Jesus was referring to that plank causing us to point fingers fingers. We have a problem with dealing with that hurt, that pain, that sin, those character defects, those shortcomings. So I want to use the word instinctively. For some reason, it's what it seems like. We start pointing fingers at somebody else, don't we? We start pointing fingers at other people. We start pointing out their faults, their character defects, their shortcomings, their sin. But yet we still got this plank in our eye. We still got a plank in our eye. Is this not true? Do we not do this? I always go back to the smoke shack because you know that's the worst offender of all. That's where we're out there talking about so and so and this and that and the other thing and we do it. What good does it do for anyone? Does it help us any? It doesn't help us any at all. Hmm. Point fingers at other people. It takes the focus off of ourselves and puts it on somebody else. We point out everybody else's faults, we judge others. And I always like to use that Jerry Springer. I call it the Jerry Springer effect. <laughs> That's why we watch Jerry Springer, because we want to see people that are worse than us. You know, we want to look at people that are worse off than us. It makes us feel better. 
So I don't know if that's uh, if I can hold that as my own, but I've always used that as the Jerry Springer effect. All right, we're going to Romans chapter 2. Are you there with me? Mm -hmm. Verse 1. You may be saying, what terrible people have you been talking about? But if you are just as bad, you have, and you have no excuse. You are just as bad, and you have no excuse. So if we're looking at other people and saying, look at them, they're terrible. We're just as bad. And we have no excuse. When you say, they are wicked and should be punished, you are condemning yourself. For you do these very same things. And when we know that God and His justice will punish anyone who does such things, do you think that God will judge and condemn others for doing them and not judge you when you're doing them? Don't you realize how kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Or, or don't you care? Or don't you care? Can't you see how kind He has been in giving you time to turn from your sin. <clears throat> God gives us time to turn from our sin. God is kind. I love that. God is <coughs> kind to us. He is merciful. And He is just. <clears throat> when you say they are wicked and should be punished because of the speck in their eye, what motivates us then to be pointing out other people's speck in their eye? Again, if we're doing it out of pure love and concern for our brother, that's one thing. But before we can even do that, we need to be worried about getting that plank. Let's at least work with the plank. You know, let's get it down to a, a little two by four, and then maybe a one by four. And then maybe we can work on a little speck while we're helping our brother work on his speck. We need to get right with God before we start pointing out everybody else's sin, character defects, shortcomings, their specks. Because if we're not, really then, what are we doing other than taking the focus off of ourselves and putting it on somebody else? Once we've worked through that plank and that 2 by 4 and that one by 4 and we only got that speck, because we're always going to have a speck, my friends. We're always going to have a speck. But at least let's get there. Because once we're there, man, we are truly concerned for our brothers. We are truly concerned for our fellow man. Another big problem is superiority. That false pride that I've spoken about over and over again. Why is it there? It's there because for the same reason that we don't want to take an honest look at ourselves. We would rather look at the inferiority we see in others because we are superior. That's what we believe with the plank in our eyes. They're all a bunch of idiots. Look at them. <laughs> I don't want to go back to the smoke shack again. But you know that's it, man. That's a hotbed of hate. It really is. Hmm. I'm sure glad I'm not as bad as they are. Remember in Luke 18, <laughs> chapter 11? The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. Oh, I thank God that I'm not a sinner like everybody else. I don't cheat, I don't sin, I don't commit adultery. Let me tell you, my friend, he surely had a speck in his eye. If it wasn't a one by four, or two by four, or whatever it was, he definitely had something going on that he couldn't see true love in God's eyes. And yet he was a Pharisee. So he says, I don't cheat, I don't sin, I don't commit adultery. I'm certainly not like that. Right? Fill in the blank for you. Fill in the blank. What is it? What is it? <sighs> Romans 5. Or, I'm sorry, 2 verses 5 through 7. 
But no, you won't listen. So you are storing up terrible punishment for yourselves because you are of your stubbornness in refusing to come. For there is going to come a day, refusing to turn from your sin, for there is coming a day of judgment when God, the just judge of the world, will judge all people according to what they have done. He will give eternal life to those who persist in doing what is good, seeking after the glory and honor and immortality that God offers. He is the just judge. He's not pointing things out and saying, look at that guy's shoes. <laughs> look at my shoes are so much better. Look at the way he's dressed. Can he comb his hair? See, God doesn't do that stuff. He doesn't judge us like that. When he sees us hurting, he hurts. When he sees us sinning, he doesn't say, look at that idiot, I'm going to condemn him. He's never going to get clean. He's never going to get saved. He doesn't do that. It hurts. He says, please, listen to me. I'm trying to help you. He has love and concern for us. He's not judging us to make himself look better. We do that. We do that. We judge others to make ourselves feel better. We say things about people in front of others to make ourselves look better. But how do we really look at ourselves? What's really going on inside? <sighs> Romans 5, 8 through 11. But he, pour, he will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves, who refuse to obey the truth and practice <clears throat> evil deeds. There will be trouble and calamity for anyone who keeps on sinning, for the Jew first and also the Gentile. But there will be glory and honor and peace from God for all who do good, for the Jew first and then the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. You hear that? God does not show favoritism. In John chapter 3, verse 16, what does it say? What is the first word in that sentence? For God so loved the world, world right? The whosoever. It's not the first word, but it's the main word. <laughs> I meant to say the most important word. The whosoever. Whoever makes a decision to turn their will and their lives over to God and accept from Him His plan for our salvation through Christ Jesus, the whosoever. It's not for just the Jew or just the Gentile or just the guy that's doing good things. It's for everyone. It's for the guy laying on the street corner. It's for everyone. He does not show favoritism. God shows His favor evenly. Evenly. To the person that's just coming into a relationship with Him. To the Pope. From the person that's there on their knees giving their lives to, Christ, to God through Christ Jesus. To the general of the Salvation Army. Equal. He favors us equally. Equally. <sighs> so what should we do? Get humble, first of all. <laughs> Get humble. Because it's only that false pride that's got us pointing fingers. It's false pride and the failure. I guess failure is a good word. Fear of being completely honest with ourselves and dealing with our own plank. Dealing with our own plank. I uh, Look at where you are. Look at where you are. We're in the Salvation Army, man. I'm glad that God has you here. But 
Never in your life when you were growing up or even in your act of addiction did you ever think you'd be in the Salvation Army. Rehab. Right? Can we get humble? Can we get humble a little bit about that? <sighs> For whatever reason, you're pointing your finger, it needs to stop. Judge not lest ye be judged. So God will judge us for a finger point. God does not favor one over another, and neither should you. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. Let me go back here so I can read it out of God's Word. Stop judging others, and you will not be judged, for others will treat you as you treat them. Whatever measure you use in judging others, it will be used to measure how you are judged. And Jesus goes on to say here, And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you've got a log, it says in the Life Recovery Bible, a log in your own. How can you think of saying, let me help you get rid of your, the speck in your eye, when you can't see past the log in your own eye. Hypocrite. First get rid of the log from your own eye, and perhaps then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Get your house in order, right? We come into a relationship with God. He speaks to our hearts. He comes in, He, he changes us, and He makes us new. But we got a clean house. We got to take a serious look at the sin that we still actively participate in. Our heart should change, and we should hurt. It, should, it hurts when we still act out in these things, doing these things that we know are wrong. <coughs> the character defects, the shortcomings, whatever you want to call them, we still hold on to that old self, little parts of it. That are a big part that are holding us back. We need to clean house. For God does not show favoritism. God shows his favor evenly to his children that have come to him humble and repentant. So don't judge others, and you will not be judged. That's God's job. And He is a good judge. He is the fair judge. Get the plank out of your eye, then help your brother with the speck in his eye. Let's look at each other as God sees us. As God sees us. Not as man sees us. I mean, we've been beat down enough. Why do we want to beat somebody else down? We've been pointed at enough. Why do we want to point at somebody else? Let's work on self and get us right so that then we can, with love, with love, help our brothers with the speck in their eye. How's that sound? Sound right? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for the truth. I thank you, Father, that this is very simple for us to understand. We know this is truth. And I thank you, Lord, that Jesus gave us this message. we got to get right. we got to get the log, the plank, whatever we call it, that big thing in our face that's causing us not to be able to see the truth because we still actively participate in things that are blinding us. Help us to be completely open and honest with ourselves. Identify the things that need to be removed. Thank you, Lord, for shedding light on sin, showing us that which is sin. You shed light. You sent us your Son, Christ Jesus, who is the light of the world. That when we come into a relationship with Him, the light turns on. We can see things for what they are. We can see sin. We can see the character defects. We can see the shortcomings, Lord. And I thank you, Father, for helping us to be able to see them. 
sometimes they're hard to deal with. It's not easy being honest with ourselves before you and our brother. So we hold on to these behaviors and we rationalize and we justify our actions all the time knowing that they're wrong, Father. So I pray, Lord, that you give us the strength we need this morning to first come into a relationship with you through your Son, Christ Jesus. To admit that we are sinners and there's nothing we can do to save ourselves, but to accept that which you've given, which is your Son. We accept Him into our hearts as our personal Savior, repenting of our sins, never wanting to go back to the old self, Lord. We lay, our, we lay them at your feet now, Father, so that we might then become new. We might become new. And you can speak to our hearts and our minds. You can point out the mistakes that we need to stay away from before we even act on them. I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that Jesus promised the Counselor who guides us in righteousness so that we might see and make the right choices today. So, Father, as you're speaking to our hearts and our minds, as we heard your message, as we know we have planks and logs and whatever in our face, Lord, that's keeping us from seeing and being close to you, Lord, I pray that you help us, Lord, to pull that plank out. Help us, Father, to get rid of the things that are blocking our view of you, of your perfect love for us, so that we too then can love <coughs> our brothers, <coughs> so that we can love each other, so that as we are walking through this life with each other, Lord, through this program, and through our walk with you, Lord, as we see each other's issues and deal with them, Father, we can do so together. We can do so together. We can help each other remove the things that get in the way of us seeing you clearly. So help us, Father, this morning to lay them at your feet. Whatever that might be, whatever gets in the way, help us, Father, to remove them from our lives so that we might come into and enjoy your kindness your fellowship, and your love for us with others. Thank you again, Father, for being here with us, Lord. I know you're always with us. But help us, Father, in all things, to include you and to receive from you all that we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Judge not. All right? Take the plank out of your eye. And you might have to whittle it down. Right? A little bit of time. So get that plank out of your eye. So you might be able to share in God's love.